Before we get started today, I just want to say a big congrats to Allie for winning our community contest for February. If you want more information on our next community contest starting March 1st, make sure to like and subscribe for all the latest updates. Okay guys, you saw the final result at the beginning of the video, but basically today we're going to be learning how to camera track our footage, and then based on that camera track, we can actually project some geometry into our scene, so let's go ahead and get started. Now before we get started, I do want to say that this method uh, won't always work with all of your footage. Uh, you basically need footage that has a lot of movement in it. Uh, so today we're going to be working with a drone shot, uh, but that basically just tells Bender the parallax and everything. So you do want a clip that moves a lot instead of stays stationary. Uh, but let's go ahead and come up here and go to VFX, Motion Tracking. And if you want to download the footage, the link to that is in the description below. So let's go ahead and open that up. Okay, here's our footage. I'm just going to open the clip. Uh, now you will notice that the color is kind of off, so let's come to the color management and set this to standard. Next we can actually go ahead and set up some tracking settings. We're going to come over here, make sure the match is previous frame, normalize, and in the tracking settings extra, we're just going to make that correlation to a 0.9. This basically means that Blender has to be 90% sure that the track is correct for it to continue tracking. Okay, now let's actually prefetch our footage. Uh, just going to come up here and prefetch. Uh, prefetching basically allows Blender to bake the frames of the video into your memory uh, so that the playback and everything is very smooth compared to it being very choppy and stuff like before. Okay, so now that our footage is prefetched, we can actually go ahead and view it. Uh, we can see that basically we just have a drone going backwards uh, into a mountain and kind of a bridge and stuff. Uh, so you will notice that there is more information, like if we come over here, you can see all of these surrounding areas uh, compared to the start of the clip. So basically we need to work backwards in this case, so we need to have all of our tracking markers come here and then track backwards. Uh, so Blender is actually very useful when it comes to that. Uh, so we're just going to make sure we're on 250 right here. And then we're going to come and hit this detect features. This basically allows Blender to detect some of the features that it thinks it's going to uh, track very well. So we're just going to open this up. Uh, now we do want a lot of tracking markers in this scene, uh, more than normal, just because we actually need those points to tell the geometry and everything. Uh, so for the threshold, I'm going to set mine to a 0.01. Uh, that should give us a little bit more. And then uh, for the distance, you can just change that down. Uh, let's try a 60. Yeah, I'm just going to stick with A60, you can see that it's given us all this information. So now to actually start tracking the markers backwards, we can come down here and this little button right here is the button that we need. So let's just go ahead and press that, and then Blender should start tracking the markers backwards instead of forwards. Okay, so my scene just finished tracking. We can actually come down here and see uh, all this mess, and don't be intimidated by this. Uh, it's really easy to clean up. Basically, we can see that a lot of the lines are concentrated in this kind of area, following this little path down here, uh, yet we have a lot of lines that kind of go above and below a little bit crazy. So all we need to do is just select those crazy lines, just hit delete, uh, and then just do these for all of the lines that are above and below. Okay, we can see that I've cleaned up the lines above and below, and now we have kind of a more uh, narrow path. Uh, but now we actually need to come up here and kind of scrub, scrub through our footage and just see if there are any other points that we kind of miss that kind of jump around and everything. Uh, just kind of scrub throughout here and kind of uh, tell visually. I do notice some points over here kind of go a little off, so let's just uh, get rid of some of these. We don't really need these for the track anyway. Uh, we don't really need the ocean, so I'm just going to delete the ocean ones over here. Uh, but all that is looking good. Now we can actually go ahead and solve our camera motion. So let's come up to the solve tab. We're going to hit our keyframe, uh, A and B. Basically, we just want to select a keyframe that has good parallax, but since our uh, footage has a lot of good parallax, we can just set a big uh, frame range. So I'm just going to do 40 to 220, and that's what I find uh, works best for this clip. And then I'm going to refine the K1 and K2 in focal length, so now we can just solve our camera motion. Okay, so we can see that we got our solve error to a 0.69, uh, so that's pretty good. Uh, nice, <laughs> uh, but we can go to the cleanup section and clean the tracks. Basically, we just want to change this reprojection error up a bit until we get just a few tracks. Uh, not too many because we do uh, want a lot of tracks in our scene, so let's just go ahead and delete these once we have it down to a low number. And then we can just solve our camera motion again. Okay, we can see that we got our solve error down to 8.51. That's pretty good. Uh, I could change it around a little bit more, try to add some more uh, tracking markers in the scene. But this is what we're going to stick with uh, since we're more worried about the geometry today. Uh, so let's actually add in our tracking scene. So just going to set up the tracking scene real quick. Uh, you should see up here that it actually changed around some stuff when it loads like this. Uh, if we actually come around, you can see that our geometry is actually pretty good. Uh, you can see that it kind of follows the cliff and everything, so that is all looking good. Uh, now we actually just need to orientate it. Uh, so let's come here. Uh, first of all, we need to set our floor, so I'm just going to set, let's try these three points to set our floor. 
Uh, that looks pretty good. So now we can set this to be our origin, this one to be our y-axis, and then we need to set around the scale uh, so everything's a little bit smaller. So let's just set the scale and kind of increase that until we get something that we like. Okay, so now uh, we actually have everything set up. Uh, if we actually come up here, we will see that we still have all of our points, uh, so that is looking good. However, they are uh, still linked to the camera. They're actually not physical uh, mesh or geometry that we can mess around with or anything. They're just kind of em empties fl floating in space and everything. So to change that, we're gonna come back down here. We're just gonna select all these uh, by hitting A on our keyboard. Uh, and then over here in the geometry section, we just wanna open that up and hit 3D markers to mesh. So now that we have that, we are actually ready to go ahead and start messing around with the mesh and everything. So let's come out to the layout section. Uh, you'll see that we have all of our dots now. If you want to see the empties again, uh, you can just come up here to the motion tracking tab, uh, just if you want to see that. Uh, but for me, I'm just going to leave that off for the sake of this tutorial. So now we're actually ready to mess around with the mesh like I was talking about. Uh, first of all, we want to select all these. Uh, we're just going to name these points so later we can actually uh, see where the mesh is and everything. Uh, so now that we have that set up, I'm just going to save my project and now we actually need to and so now to actually get in our mesh and everything there are many ways you can do it the manual way which is the most tedious way is to actually go ahead and select three points like that and then just press F and then do that for the entire mesh now this is a very long process and there's actually an automated way to do this uh, that I found that works for me now there are two things that you need to download uh, first of all is a uh, earlier version of blender I downloaded blender version 2.79 the link to that is in the description below and also a add-on uh, link to that is also in the description below so once you have both of those uh, downloaded let's go ahead and hop over to blender 2.79 so here we are uh, in the new blender file uh, we can go ahead and just uh, see the this scene. Uh, this is the default scene and everything. Uh, now we do need to enable our add-ons. So let's come up here to file. We're going to go to user preferences and then you can just hit install uh, add-on from file. Basically you just want to find wherever uh, you saved your zip file uh, and then just open that up and install the add-on right here. But I've already done that so we can just get out of that. Uh, next, when you have that installed, you just want to look up point and you should see that we have this mesh point cloud skinner. This is the add-on we just downloaded, so you want to make sure that that is checked. Next, we actually need to uh, import in our points that we just made. Uh, so to do that, let's just go to file, append, and then we're going to find our blender file. Okay, so here is my file that we are working in. We're just going to go to the file object and then we're going to find our points object that we made. So uh, right here, then append from library. Now you should see that we have all of our points in the scene now, so that is looking pretty good. Uh, now to actually go ahead and do our mesh and all the stuff for the add-on, we need to come to the scene properties, come down here. Instead of the entire object being to the plane, we need it to be to points, which is our object. And then if we actually hit skin right here, you will notice that it has actually projected our uh, geometry and everything. Now you can mess around with some of these settings right here. Uh, for example, the ratio of axis, ratio of grid and everything. Basically, if you don't get a result like me, uh, you can play around with some of this and hopefully get a little bit cleaner of a result and everything. Um, but this is good for me, so I'm just gonna save this as it is. So let's go ahead and rename this. Instead of points, I'm gonna name this to mesh. Uh, and then basically right now uh, we need to change this back to mesh uh, just in case. Uh, but basically we need to save this as a new Blender file. I'm going to name mine mesh. So now we can save that. Uh, now we're actually done in here so we can exit out of that. Okay, so now I'm back in my original Blender file. Uh, we do want to make sure we're in object mode because uh, this next step won't work if you're not. So let's come up to the file, uh, append and then go into the mesh instead of geometry object and then we want the mesh object uh, into our scene so pin that in and you should see that now we have our mesh so everything is looking good I'm just gonna come over here and hide our little points just because we don't need those anymore uh, now you will see that our geometry is very uh, messed up in some parts and everything and that's uh, to come with the add-on just the way it uh, kind of processes all the points and everything uh, now this is the part where we're actually gonna have to do some manual labor to actually clean this up a bit uh, so so I'll kind of walk you guys through the process. Okay, so first of all, we will notice that we have kind of this uh, mess right here. I'm not going to really use that part uh, for our scene, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. So let's go into edit mode. I'm going to make x-ray turned on. Go to face select and press C to uh, select some of these faces. Um, so C, just selecting all these faces I'm not really going to use. 
uh, just so we can delete those and kind of clean up the scene a little bit. So let's just delete the faces like that. And then also right here, I noticed some of these faces I'm not really going to use and they kind of look a bit ugly. So let's just delete those as well. Now let's go ahead and get out of X-Ray. Now we also see that the side of this mountain is a little messed up too. Uh, we can actually fix that by going in edit mode, uh, going to vertex select, and then just selecting three vertices and just hitting F to add in some faces. Okay, so I've added a few more faces into our scene, kind of just trying to clean it up a little bit more. Now you can go into more in-depth uh, about this or whatever, but uh, for the sake of my scene, this is fine. Now one thing that kind of sucks about this method is that there's no really way to smooth this out other than going into the sculpt mo mode and kind of smoothing it out yourself manually. Now you might be thinking we can actually add in a subdivision surface modifier, but since uh, we have triangles instead of kind of uh, quads, uh, then that actually doesn't allow us to add subdivision surface onto it. Uh, if I go ahead and just add it, I'll show you real quick. Uh, if we just go ahead and add it, uh, if I change this up and everything, you notice that the edges kind of get a little more smooth, like right here and stuff, uh, but the actual triangle still uh, like exists and stuff. So uh, that just an unfortunate thing about this add-on and method. Uh, so just keep that in mind. So one thing I do notice real quick is that if I come down here, uh, we don't have like any geometry over here. So I'm just going to fake that real quick by going into edit mode and then just selecting kind of these all along here. Basically just trying to give us a little bit more geometry that we can work with. So once I have those selected, I can just hit E to extrude those. And then I'm just going to move these out a bit just so we can get some uh, shadows and stuff. I actually moved this out here. Uh, up here, but that's fine. We don't really need that. Finally is to actually create our bridge. Uh, so let's come up here. Uh, we can go ahead and delete this. We won't need that. So let's just move our cube down, hold uh, G, then hit Z, and then hold control, and then move that down one. Uh, so now it's kind of resting on our floor plane. If I actually come in here and go to into uh, wireframe, we can see that it's resting on the floor plane right here. Uh, so now we actually need to uh, line that up to the bridge a little bit. Let's just hide that. Uh, so the bridge is about right there. Um, then it's going to come out a little bit. Um, kind of there. And then this can just extend all the way down like that. You will notice that it doesn't follow it perfectly. So what we can do is first of all just uh, make that come up a little bit. But next we can just come over here rotate this on the Z. So hit Z. And then just kind of try to align that as well as possible. Doesn't have to be perfect since we are just using this for kind of a uh, geometry for our scene and everything. Um, okay, so that's actually the hardest part out of the way for this tutorial, just recreating some of the geometry based on our scene. Uh, so now let's just uh, do some fancy stuff with it just to show you guys kind of uh, the workflow or what you can use it for. So let's go ahead and delete this background collection and view layer up here. Just hit that X, go into the compositing. We don't need these four nodes since we just deleted those backgrounds. Uh, then we can plug this image into the image socket. Make sure this is on convert to pre-multiply. Then back here in the layout section, we want to come out to the render properties, make this into cycles, uh, GPU compute. I'm going to make this into a 64 sample count with adaptive sampling on. We can go ahead and set uh, viewport denoising on as well. Uh, then in the light pads, I'm just going to change all these down to a three. And then the uh, caustics, we can just turn both of those off as well. Next, we need to go into film, make sure that's on transparent. And then finally, in the performance, since I'm rendering on a GPU, uh, we can just make that 512 by 512. Okay, so now let's actually uh, make this into a collision object. We're basically just gonna have a cube just falling down the mountain real quick. Uh, so let's come over here, go into the physics properties, make this a rigid body, passive, uh, since we don't want it to be affected by gravity. And then same thing for the bridge. Then we can go ahead and add in a cube. I'm just going to bring this up here on the mountain and everything. Uh, let's just make a couple because that will be a little bit more interesting for our scene. So that looks pretty good. Let's uh, make this a rigid body. So all that looks good. Now let's just uh, shift uh, select these. Make sure that this first one is selected yellow and come up to object, uh, rigid body, and then copy from active. So now all of them are rigid bodies. And then the final thing that we need to do is actually make this collision be more accurate. Uh, so instead of convex hole, uh, we want it to be on mesh. So now if I come up to the scene properties and go into the rigid body world, we can go ahead and uh, bake this uh, to our cache. And so now we can see that our uh, cubes are falling down and everything, so that is looking good. Finally, let's go into the camera view. Let's go into the render mode, uh, just so we can see kind of what it looks like, so we can try to match the scene a little bit more. 
so we do notice that these aren't set to shadow catchers. Uh, basically, a shadow catcher only projects the shadows and nothing else. So to fix that, let's go to the object properties. Once you have it selected, then to the visibility section, you should see a mask uh, shadow catcher. You want to turn that on, and then you want to do the same thing for this bridge. Just make sure that's on. Uh, now it will only cast the shadows of other objects. Okay, the final thing that we need to do is actually mess around with the lighting. So let's uh, bring that around here. Uh, this is just the default uh, light that came in the scene, so I'm just going to mess with that. Uh, bring that around there, and then let's just increase the power until we get something that we like. So something like that, that looks pretty good. And then I'm just going to increase the radius a bit, um, just so we have a little bit more feathering and stuff. Um, because the shadows aren't as harsh. If I look down here, you can see that the shadows aren't as hard. Um, so we just need to kind of match that a bit. But next thing we need to do is come down here and make sure that the bridge is actually covering up our cubes when they pass over it. So let's come here and then go ahead and render out an image. Okay, so you can see that does a pretty good job. If I wanted to uh, actually like model out this bridge and everything, I could. Uh, if I had the time or whatever, but this is just a simple scene that I wanted to do. Uh, so we have to do a couple more things. Uh, first of all, we need to actually set uh, the frame range of our certain name and keyframe. So let's come to camera, just uncheck this background uh, images layer so we can speed up everything. So I know I want to end it, let's say at 80. So just change that real quick. Then also I noticed there was some uh, noise in our actual render. So to get rid of that noise, I'm going to come to the view layer properties, going to go down to denoising data. And then in the compositing tab, I'm just going to scroll down here, add a denoise node right here. And then we're going to plug the noisy image to the image and the normal to the normal and the albedo to the albedo. Next, we can just replace that image socket into the alpha overnode. And then finally, uh, since this is a 4K image uh, and everything, I don't really want to render it out in 4K since that will take a long time. So I'm basically just going to change my uh, resolution down to a 1080p uh, video. But uh, if we render this out now, our movie clip will still be rendered in 4K. So what we need to do is add in a scale node, add that in between here and the uh, alpha overnode. And then we're going to change this to render size. So now let's come out and render an image just so we can see if uh, everything looks right. Okay, so everything is looking good. We're ready to export our project. So let's come to the export settings. Uh, we're gonna make a new location for our file. Okay, and then we're gonna change this to FFmpeg video, then to MP4, and then finally change this to high quality. And now we can go ahead and render the animation. Okay guys, here is our final result we got from this video. Uh, hopefully you guys learned a thing or two about uh, camera tracking and also how to recreate some of your geometry in your scene. Again, I do want to reiterate that this only works for some footage, uh, basically footage that has a lot of movement in it. Uh, so if you're on a tripod or uh, just standing still and tracking, then this uh, method won't really work as well. You can still try it. It might work if you uh, maybe have a, enough camera shake or whatever. Uh, but this is just an easy method of how to get more complex geometry in your scene. Anyways, guys, we have a Patreon and Discord. Links to those are in the description below. Uh, but anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Peace.